put my hands up and my face uh, hit the canvas and I was like, okay, boom, I got back there. I was like, okay, I'm, I'm ready to go. So it was one of those moments. Yeah. It, it showed your grit, man. Like it's, it showed you were legit. Mm -hmm. And what the UFC did after that is they, um, that was January, August 21st, 2004, UFC 49. They put you with Eve Edwards, but there isn't a title attached to that yep. fight, which should have been kind of a heads up for everybody. So yeah. Would you mind walking us through that? Yeah, it was one of the most disappointing like moments kind of in my career because I was the number one guy in the world at the time in the, in the rankings, not just the UFC rankings, but all across the websites, I was the number one guy in the world uh, at, at lightweight and Eve was number two. And so I was like kind of upset at the fact that it wasn't for the UFC title it was supposed to be and then on top of that like they really didn't even have us like high up in the in the prelims I don't think we were the last fight on the prelims they were like one of the first fights of the night crazy yeah and so like there was no one really in the arena it was a shitty situation and I kind of was I kind of was like already hinting it like 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 this this sucks you know so I kind of was I was already bailed out they were telling us that this probably was gonna be the last fight in the lightweight division for a while and so so I was like, you knew okay, that? I pretty much knew it. Yeah, I pretty much knew it. So, yeah, because they there was no one, there was no one really yes, no no one really left for us to fight. Like they they hadn't fought guys like like Matt Sarah and and BJ was in limbo. Um, Matt Sarah was I think talking about one seventy or was back up at one seventy. There was like fights that just weren't making sense. Like Dean was pretty much done. Dean Thomas, Carl Uno had been starched a couple times. It was just like. You know, um, he got knocked out by by Hermes. It was like there was there, there was no true cut like who's the best guys at 155 other than me and Eves and Hermes. We were the top three guys, and so at the time, once I knew that was going to happen, I went out there trying to showboat, trying to show off, trying to like trying to like show them that like, hey, you know, like th you got to keep us around, and this should be for the title and all this shit, and it backfired, man. Like there, there's not a reason in the world. After, like, you go back and watch that first round. There's no way that I lost that first round. I, I dominated every aspect of that first round. So why, with 20 seconds left, knowing there's only 20 seconds left in the first round, knowing that I was up 10-9, just fucking turn and face him, or, like, when he pushed off, or when I got when I got his hands free, just do, like, I was going to roll through for a knee bar. That didn't happen. I was like, hey, fuck it, 20 seconds, just throw a spinning back fist. Like, show them what they're missing. If you catch this, it's going to be lights out. It's going to be done. Like, those type of things cost me the fight i regret it ever since but it's like i also regret i regret the fact that that like i did things that i would never have done in any other fight would have never have done that in any other fight because I, I thought it should have been for the title and i was trying to showcase that like see we can be exciting see we can do this and i did but unfortunately it was not in my favor well, well wait uh, a minute now in, in when you when you fought razor rob Check out the full interview on iTunes, Spotify, and all major podcast platforms.